Hey folks. Well, I uh, thought I'd cut a quick video here. I got to thinking about this today because I had to uh, make a run to another city um, and talk to some old friends. And uh, what do you pack when you go to the range? And I, I mean, besides ammo and your gun. Um, so I got to thinking. I've really, I mean, I've covered what I kind of pack. I know, I know, I, I got a video on my channel about what I pack up when I go to a, a comp, but that's very different than just a standard issue range trip. Um, so I got to thinking, and I've really never really laid it out. So besides your firearm, which as you can see is here, this is happens to be the Legion, um, the three P three twenty X five. My uh, range or uh, my uh, comp gun, so I grabbed it because it needed a good cleaning again. I haven't it I haven't I haven't been able to compete because I still don't my my knee after all that surgery is still not still hundred hundred percent. So I don't trust it. Uh, you, you doing any slide stops and stuff like that right now? So gun. Ammo is kind of a given. I don't have any sitting out here right now, but I'm not going to gear this towards new gun owners. So this is going to go into that uh, into that pile of uh, the new gun owner series. So let's take it begin from the beginning. So you, you go to the gun store, you buy your gun, you get ammo, all that other good stuff. Um, basic, you know. I would, I would hope that most gun stores would give you a basic primer on how to clean your gun if you don't know how to do it. So, you're going to need a good set of ears. These happen to be the Peltor Range Masters. I like these. These are the electronic amp amplified, so you can actually hear range commands and stuff. Uh, range guards. I'm sorry, not Range Masters. Um, not terribly expensive. Um, there are other cheaper ones out there. I don't like the walkers. My wife has went through a couple sets of them. They just don't hold up. These, I've never had an issue with these. Just change the batteries. And I'm, uh, they take four, four triple A's, I think. I think it's four. Maybe it's only two. I don't remember. I haven't changed them in a while. Um, two. It takes two. Um, so, good set of ears. I, pref I strongly recommend the amplified ones. It shut off sound when somebody shoots around you or when you shoot. But just because you have ears doesn't mean you need good earplugs. Uh, these happen to be, I've had these for a while, um, three or four years. These are decibels. These mold to the actual the inner part of your ear. You know, so they're all molded up. So it's the custom fit for you. Put a set of these in, and a, and a set of good rate, um, amplified um, uh, set of hearing protection, and you're good to go. So in case those ever fail, you're still covered. These are rated at 30 decibels, and those on top are rated for 27. Um, they don't stack exponentially, but they do stack a little bit, so you're still getting an overall rating of over 30 decibels. But it's like 2 to 1. Uh, you know, for every two decibels, you only get one. If you're using two sets of, don't quote me on this, this is what I was told. I should, probably should research this. I believe if you're using two forms of hearing protection, they don't, the 30 and the 27 don't stack together. The 27's halved. But still, you're getting over 30 decibels of hearing protection. So, um, these are all beat up. These are prescription safety glasses. Um, I wear these, I mean, these are really, really ragged. I got to get a new set. These happen to be Wiley X's. Um, but, uh, if you wear prescription glasses, I really recommend getting a set of prescription safety glasses, um, to use at the range. If you're going to go a lot, if you're not, you can get away with the ones that go over your regular glasses or just wear contacts and regular safety glasses. Um, I have vision issue to where I wear half four contacts and readers for the uh, magnification. So these are uh, progressive lenses 
so I can get away with not having to wear my contacts and my uh, readers and still be able to shoot so I can still see the sights and the target down the range. Otherwise, it's a little dicey. Um, so yeah, eye protection, minimum. So, I, I'm gonna, oh, I'm just gonna grab my range bag. You've seen this range bag before. This happens to be one from 511. Um, it's the biggest one they've got because reasons. <laughs> Lots of room. Overpack for the range because you never know what you're going to need. But uh, I always have, you know, all my mags. These, this happens to be a mag pouch on the side. So individual mags are segmented in there. Um, big center pocket for extra amp. You know, load all your ammo into there and that way you don't have to bring in two bags. Although I end up still bringing two bags because I got a long gun. Um, so lots of pockets for all kinds of stuff. Never underestimate how warm the inside ranges can get. So I'll bring your bring a soda or some water. Okay. Cleaning stuff. <laughs> I always have a bag, small bag that I can pull, throw um, small bottles of oil. And um, I generally don't bring cleaning solvent with me to the range, but I always bring four snake. One for every caliber I'm using. So one for the gun, one for the pistol, one for the long gun. Um, I started switching to the Otis's because these are just amazing. Um, these don't fray and fall apart. I can throw these in the dishwasher and clean them. Um, these breakthrough and breakthrough clean technology ones were, are great, but they just don't hold up. Um, and they don't like going, they don't like being cleaned as well. Because they're soft and flimsy and they just fall apart and shred. You can see it starting to fray and just... But I'm not saying they make bad products. Because I love their oils and their greases. But their, their um, battle ropes, just there's better stuff out there. The Otis reports are the way to go. Um, so what else do I have? I always have extra batteries your heat protection. I always like to throw a extra set of dis couple of extra sets of disposable ear pro in there, you know, the little ear little rolly foam ones in case you bring somebody with you to the range. Um, which I encourage you doing by the way. Um, always 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 have some sort of first aid kit with you. I have a trauma kit in my go bag that I always take everywhere with me so I don't carry one in my range kit and range bag. Although I do have some, band, just a handful of band-aids and that kind of thing and extra. Always have, don't throw away your old t-shirts. Cut them up for rags for when you're cleaning guns. And I always throw a handful of these cut up pieces of t-shirt. You'd be surprised how often you're going to use something like this when you're at the range. Just saying. And this it's a lot cheaper in the long run than a roll of these. I, I like cleaning guns with these, but when it comes for wiping guns off and things like that, um, I have a, a little ADHD about my magazines. <laughs> After I've been shooting at the range for a little while, I'll wipe them off before I throw them back in the in the in my range bag. I don't know why; it's just a thing I do. So I always keep some of these for that kind of stuff too. Uh, Tools. We're going to go down a rabbit hole here. Um, I actually don't have my range tools in my range bag right now because they're sitting right here. This is a little neat little product. This stuff. Neat little product from, it's marketed by Smith & Wesson. This looks like an oversized pen, but if you open it up, you've got punches and, and small Allen keys. They're not really punches, they're more like um, push punches. To yeah. These are amazing for disassembling guns on the range, like Glocks, uh, anything with push pins, 
these come in extra handy for really tight ARs for pushing the takedown pins out. I just, I can't emphasize enough how much I have used this thing. Um, it's not for made, made for beating. You know, you can't drive a punch, a pin, a roll pin out with it, but these are great for getting them started. And also, again, for takedown pins, like for glocks and stuff like that, where you just have to push the pin through. These are amazing. This end is magnetic. So those pin, well, it's kind of a combination magnetic, and it's also got a little catch in there. You can just drop, like, the brass punches in there and push push pins through. This is thing. This thing's a lifesaver. <laughs> Don't remember what this costs. I know it's available on Amazon, but uh, I've seen them at gun shops, too. And, of course, if you've got an AR, you need a sight tool. I like to stuff that in there because this little neat little pouch and it's molly capable which it usually gets either strapped to the I always throw it in the range bag but sometimes if I'm only taking a pistol I won't take the full blown range bag I'll just take my go bag and throw up throw ammo in there in my ears so I'll, I'll just strap this onto the outside um also I usually have like a, some sort of multi-tool. I think it's over here. Oh, it's in my other go bag. Okay, that's where it is. So yeah, I've got a couple multi-tools. Um, always have one in my car, but um, I've got it in my other uh, in the SOG go bag. I've got. I haven't. I didn't transfer it, but um, I usually have that. And this, and I always have in my go bag. I've always always got an extra one of these, and then I've got two of these breakthroughs, the longer ones, because these actually work pretty good for rifles um, because of the long leader line. Um, actually, I've got a couple. Of, I got a rip. I've got an extra one thrown in my go bag, just of the the long leader here, and I'm, you don't know what I'm talking about, so I'll just unroll it for you. This roll, this little bit right here, this rope part, comes in super handy because this this just I've got an extra one that I've actually bent this hook off of this piece. This little guy right here, I don't need that because that's bore specific. So I bent that. I got an old one of these, and I bent that hook and took this guy off and hooked it onto the end of one of. I hook it onto the end of this guy because that little rope, it's got a little, little brass weight on it and it comes in super handy for dropping down the barrel of rifles. <laughs> hey, whatever works, right? Sometimes they don't offer exactly what you want on the shelf, but you can Frankenstein stuff together and I'm all about that. Again, this channel's not about having the most tactical stuff on the planet it's about affordable reliable you don't have to spend a fortune to have a good gun now i say this with an 1800 dollars gun sitting in front of me i didn't buy this my wife gave me this as a gift i would have never spent this kind of money so <laughs> you, you see what i carry for you guys know what i carry for my carry gun a freaking taurus you know but I'm still, with all the upgrades I've done to this, this handgun, I'm still un, in under the cost of a Glock. Not that I like Glocks anyway, because you got to spend a fortune on a Glock to get it working right. All right. So we've covered tools. We've covered on-site cleaning, because you really should run a, at least run a bore snake through your gun when you get done shooting at the range before you take it home and completely clean it. You want to get any of that unburnt powder and fouling out of there. <clears throat> the longer the longer it sits in the barrel, the more corrosion it's going to cause. So, quick pass through with a bore snake of your choice and a wipe down on the outside to get the powder off of it. Pack it up, take it home, and then give it a good cleaning. But you don't have to spend a fortune on it. I mean, if your range bag is an old backpack, if it works for you, use it. I like something with some dedicated chambers. Um, I also compete with that range bag, too. 
So that that's why I've got that nicer bag because it gets tossed on the on wet ground and it wouldn't a, a, a backpack wouldn't hold up to that kind of use. That that's been through three seasons of USPSA and it's 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 got some stains on the bottom of it from getting tossed into the mud, um, but it's holding up pretty well. So. You know, you do do what you you don't again. Don't spend a fortune, but buy the best stuff you can afford. Um, you can always upgrade later, and there are some deals to be had right now. Still, um, there's a lot. If you go, believe it or not, if you go to a five, I bought that on site at a five eleven store and got it a lot cheaper than I could have online because that was an older model that they. Did, had dis, discontinued and it was there and it was the last one they had. So do the legwork, folks. Um, you, again, you don't have to spend a lot of money to have good stuff in this. You because you can really go down a rabbit hole in the firearms outfitting, but you don't have to. So enough ranting. What else do I got that I need to talk about here? Oh. Microfiber cloth. Always have one. Always have one. If you've got an optic on your handgun, which I do run an optic sometimes. Still, I, don't, I, need, I need to get some new mountain plates. You're going to want an optic cleaning, microfiber cleaning cloth. And I keep it in this little plastic, little crinkly thing to keep it clean. I need to get something better. I need to, I need to find a Ziploc bag that size. Keep that guy, wipe off your glasses, wipe off your optic. And speaking of optics, oh, I need to talk about that too. It's in here somewhere. Rangefinder. Now, you can get these in various price points. This happens to be a Simmons. I didn't buy this myself either. I got this as a Christmas gift two years ago. But um, this, is, this is probably one of the most used items that isn't a firearm in my household. If you're going to sight in a firearm, it's the only way to go. And that is at zero yards because I'm pointing it at the wall. But you sight through, look at what you want to hit, pull the trigger, and that is at five yards to the back of that wall. So. I didn't think I'd ever buy one, but then when I started shooting USPSA, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it really does help with your accuracy. You, you, the human eye, I mean, you could probably get trained, you can train yourself to be accurate in judging distances, but this takes the guesswork out of it. Down to, down to the quarter yard, this will tell me what, what I'm looking at. And you don't have to spend this Simmons money or Bush or Bushnell money. Or Tasco money, even you can get like Muddy River uh, at Academy or Bass Pro for way less than I than I'm sure the wife spent for this. But uh, yeah, just make sure you read the instructions on how to work it. I mean, everyone's a little different. This one I have to click the this particular model. I just sight through, click it once, and then click it again, and it gives me the yardage. So. Because the first time you, you sights in on something, it shoots a laser, and then the click it again, and it gives you the reading. So, uh, and these usually take like well, watch type batteries. I think this one, I think this one actually takes the CR, the big CR, thick boys. Yeah, CR two. 
but uh, they're not they're not too hard to get. I've got is that a CR two or is that a CR? Yeah, that's a CR two. I've got some one twenty threes also for that. I think it may work in there. Mm, I have to look now. Curiosity. Anyway, um, what else? Oh. Sharpie marker of whatever. I usually have two colors. I, I usually have a silver and I usually have a black. Why? Okay. When you're out, when you're shooting out of range, especially for this is geared. It says aimed at you new folks. When you're shooting at a target, you're going to want to run two or three rounds through, then pull the target up and look at it. And then what I usually do the first first three I shoot, I'll I'll circle circle the whole all three of them in one color, run it back to the same point, shoot three more, circle them in another color, shoot three more. Now look where you're at. That way you, you can tell first three, second three, third three. It just it's a mental game that you're playing with yourself. So you're not, you're not, that way you're not targeting the same spot. You don't want to try and, just because you shoot one bullseye, you don't want to aim at that bullseye every time now. You got to break yourself of that habit. Because you want to get to the point where you're instinctively pointing the gun where you want it to go. And I don't, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole, but just try that. Um... One last thing. So if you're going to spend any kind of time at the range, you're going to want one of these. The Maglua. And uh, they're for various calibers. This works for... Uh, uh, this works for uh, 9 millimeter, 40 cal, 380. Not that you need it for a 380. Um, yeah, I think that's it. I don't think this will work for 45. Uh, they come in different colors and different calibers. This one I know works for 9mm and 40. Uh, well, hang on, let me look at the side and it'll tell me. Oh, it does work for 45. So 9mm to 45 ACP. Of course, it would work for 9mm work 382, but if, <laughs> unless you have a double stack 380, maybe. But um, these things are amazing. They're not that expensive. You can pick them up in any sporting goods store. Maglua. And they make them for rifle ones, too. Uh, but that's, a, that's another subject for another day. This is just basics on what you should pack. So, eye protection, hearing protection, tools that you may need. Recommend this, and I recommend a multi-tool. Um, or snakes. Some sort of oil. Um, whatever, whatever oil you use to oil your guns, I recommend having in here. Um, I don't necessarily say you need to have your greases and everything, because I'm a grease guy. Um, but you need to have at least some kind of oil. Because, well, you just, you know, especially if you're running, you're running a lot of rounds through that, that particular day, you may want to stop, pull your slide off, put a couple drops of oil on it, even if you write, use grease. Because, well, we'll talk about breaking in guns in a different day. This is, again, we're gearing this towards new folks. But also, if you're running an AR, you want to have some, some type of lubricant with you. Um... Right now, my lubricant of choice is the Miltec. Um, it's uh, it's actually it actually has an NSN number on it. It is what the military does actually use. Um, although I also highly recommend um, um, uh, the uh, um, Slip Two Thousand. Their their line of oils and greases. Are also amazing. I mean, I if you have some of the Slip 2000 gun cleaner right here, and this is water based, which is a godsend if you're running an AR. Uh, but um, 
but also the Breakthrough Clean stuff. Their hype, their HP oil is amazing, which I have some of their cleaner right here. Uh, but yeah, I just use this old repurposed little oil dropper tube or oil dropper bot or eye dropper bottle with a little fine tube to do all my gun gun oiling. And then I've got just shop. This is a little Rubbermaid container of um, Aeroshell. Aeroshell 64. This is the this is this is actually what's called out for on ARs. But I use it on all my guns. Uh, just keep it simple. Um, but anyway, uh, that's just that's more than, slightly more than scratching the surface on what you need to put in your range bag besides guns and ammo. Hopefully it was informative. I know I've been rambling a little bit because I go out on tangents sometimes. But, um, yeah. Um, first legit video, not just state of, the, state of the channel. This is first legit video of the year. So we're going to give a shout out to um, friends of the channel and official holster maker of the channel, uh, Bucks Holsters. Um, you guys if you've seen this, if you're new to the channel, this is the custom holster that Ross down at Bucks made for me. Um, give these guys a shout. Um, also, new gun owners especially, you need to talk to our friends at USCCA. I'm not going to go down a rabbit hole and get too deep into this, but basically it's self-defense insurance. But also more than that, they offer training. They have an amazing online training program now. Check them out. And last but not least, the, the one affiliate we have on the channel, I don't have it sitting out here. Gosh darn it. I am so unprepared for this. Uh, Siley Optics. They make a, an affordable, reliable, solid little optic. And you're going to ask yourself, Darren, why don't you have that installed on a gun right now? Well, I did. Um, the mounting plate that I was using was not up to snuff. And uh, the little lug broke. The optic is fine, but the little mounting lug broke on the on the op, the mounting plate that I had. So uh, yeah, I'm in the market for a new mounting plate. I've got a couple of them I'm looking at right now. I'm probably going to go with an EWG or a DD, DPP titanium solid titanium plate. Uh, <clears throat> it is a nice little mount or a nice little optic. It's one of the more more intelligently designed red dots out there because I don't know if you notice this you don't have to take the damn thing off to put put a new battery in it's got a little tray and it comes with a spare tray in case it falls out and, and super affordable it's like 60 between 65 and 69 dollars um, on Amazon and then you can order it direct from them I'll throw a link in the pinned comment to Siley and uh, give it a click It'll do me a fa it'll do Siley a favor. It'll do me a favor um, as our um, affiliate, and uh, I'll also put a link to Bucks, and I'll also put a link to USCCA, um, just because I like them. And with that, I hope everybody is uh, safe and healthy this new year, and keep your powder dry, folks, and stay tuned for more content.